Hi, and welcome to The Artist World. I'm your host, Tony Disco. Today we're here with Lynn Munsinger, a beautiful book illustrator, a children's book illustrator, and we're going to be talking about uh, making a career in art, actually. Uh, she's been working in this for quite some time, and she's a delightful woman. Lynn, how are you? I'm great. How are you, Tony? Um, Thanks. Thanks for having me. Oh, happy to, ha happy to have you here. It's just this is exciting for me. Um, let's talk a little bit before we get into the actual illustration part of what you're doing, a little bit of your history and how you got into the, uh, into the business. Sure. Well, I like to draw as long as I can remember. I mean, I loved to draw as a child, and I loved picture books, and, um, and I used to try to copy the illustrations. I remember one of my favorites was, did you ever see the Eloise books by Hillary Thompson? No, no I'm sorry. No, or I, Hillary I, I, Knight, rather, and, um, and they're, they're really very expressive, and uh -huh. I'd get my little pen out and make these little funny copies of them, and, and um, I always wanted to do something in art, and I always took classes, and uh, eventually I went off to the Rhode Island School of Design, Mm -hmm. uh, without any kind of clear picture of what I was going to do. And um, I was in the painting for a while and not very successful at it, although I mean, uh -huh. thanks to your classes, I'll be taking it up again maybe in late at this point in life. Yes. But um, one day um, a, um, an, a teacher came in who was doing a seminar in developing characters for children's books. And it was the first thing I did well at. And I just loved it. You know, I, could, I can draw expressions, I can draw, you know, um, I can tell a story with my pictures and so that's what I ended up uh, majoring in. Hey, and that's, that's great because yeah. a lot of people, uh, there's a lot of people in the, in the world that don't have that capability. I mean it comes naturally to you is what you're saying, mm. to be able to be expressive through character. Mm -hmm. So that, that's a natural and if that's yeah. a natural it's just a wonderful way for you to take that take your career and yeah. just move into an area that you'd love so much. I mean, you must love it. You I, do so well at it. I do. I, yes, I, I've yeah. been very lucky. And um, because the, the, this applied sort of field that I do um, is what I do best anyway. So it, it was, I was lucky because a lot of artists, it's very difficult to make uh, a living at it. And yeah. I was always able to. I remember my mom, um, after I had had quite a bit of success, uh, finally confided in me that when I first told her what I was going to do, she was going, oh, no. She's either going to be really poor or she's going to have to marry a rich man. Yeah, and <laughs> I, I, hear you. I hear you. But I was very fortunate. And well, I, it's a very competitive market. I mean, yeah. uh, the, any, any of the businesses, any of the, uh, the acronyms within the art world, whether it's commercial or not, and I grew up in that business mm -hmm. and I spent a lot of time doing not your kind of stuff, but doing a lot of layout and design for catalogs and promotional material mm -hmm. and so forth. It's a very competitive market, and it's mm -hmm. very tough to do. Yes. So you know, it's a matter of matter of getting in there and just working your craft until you get it well enough and yeah. be recognized so that somebody can hire you to do it. Yeah, I did all kinds of things in the very beginning because I was freelancing and. Uh, um, I did greeting cards and I did educational textbook work, which you don't have a lot of creative freedom to do. Right. And then I was lucky and I got my first, um, I was sort of so terrified to bring my portfolio around and actually into the publishers and show people. But um, I got started at Houghton Mifflin about two months after graduation and got my first book. And, That's incredible. And yes. And I had a wonderful, the publisher there was wonderful. He was, he had gone to RISD himself. He was an illustrator himself and he really mentored me. Yeah. And I don't know that. that the editors have as much freedom to do that these days as when I started, so I was very lucky. Well, RISD is an extremely good design school, yes, as, it is. as yes. we know. Um, and I've, uh, I've been fortunate in, in touching bases with a couple of people that I were close to mm -hmm. uh, that, that were uh, professors at RISD and, and taught at RISD. Uh, and, and they were extremely accomplished people, oh, yes. accomplished artists, and yeah. they both made livings, their living within the fine art world doing illustration. Yes. So, uh, but but a little bit different kind of stuff than you're doing. Yeah. But she's unbelievable, unbelievable work, and it's nice to see that you graduated out of that. Was that your formal training? Was RISD? That was it. Yes. The, yeah. The, I mean, yeah. I had taken, I had, I was going to uh, Tufts University prior to that, and I, I took like art classes at mm -hmm. uh, through them at the museum school, and then right. one summer at BU School of Art, and I tried different right. things right. around there, but. Uh, yeah, but that acronym was basically broad based. The, yes. And, and so forth. Yeah, I know painting, I, life drawing. Right, exactly. Yeah, it wasn't, which it was is, not illustration. Illustration didn't start for me, I mean, except I'd been doing it without knowing it in high school and on my own and, you know, kind of thing. And uh, Well, the, the, uh, the base that you got, just the, the painting and drawing and so forth mm -hmm. and so on, is, is, is a wonderful base for where mm -hmm. you ended up. Right. I mean, that, without that, I don't think you probably would have. Evolved into probably the area that you're in right now, so it it all contributed to where you where you ultimately ended up. Right. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk a little bit about the books. I mean, you must have done your fairly 
prolific in terms of what you're doing in the mm. book world, in the children's book world. Um, can I ask you how you collaborate with your, I mean, how do you actually get your work is where I'm going with Okay. Um, I get my work predominantly through the publisher. The publisher, like Houghton Mifflin Random House or one of those, will, and I probably work for all of them, um, will get a manuscript for publication and mm -hmm. they put it under contract with the author and um, then they look for an illustrator. Uh, most people think that authors have to find their own illustrators and present that project all done, but that that is not how it works. Um, I'm, you know, my half of the project is to take somebody else's words and design a book out of it. Mm -hmm. I, I put the decide where the text goes on each page, and we have a set number of pages, usually 32, for a children's picture book, and. Um, and I develop the characters and decide where the text is going. And, um, and I work with the art director or uh, uh, the editor at the publisher. Okay. Now, now I do collaborate with a couple of authors that I've done a lot of books with. But, but for example, Helen Lester, who wrote Tacky the Penguin. And we did a whole series with that. And, and she's got a great sense of humor. And I was lucky to be her friend now, as well as her illustrator. Oh, so we go back and forth and share ideas. But that's more unusual. Lots, uh, mostly, I don't have any contact with the author until after the whole project is done. That's incredible. So, yeah. it's, so it's an experience for the author to first of all take a look at what yeah. ultimately she wrote and you, and yeah. you illustrated. And so hopefully they're happy and, with and it. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, it's, hopefully it's yeah. a, you went down the right right path. Right, but it's kind of uh, it's it, it's kind of like I think as a, a director might cast a movie and the the writer of the screenplay or the writer of the book it was based on might have a whole different idea in his head about who would be best to play the parts yeah. and then so the publisher and the director might have a different vision for a certain type of manuscript that of, of whose art were, would work best with it well, that maybe the author doesn't. I mean, a lot of illustrators write their own picture books, mm -hmm. and I never have, and, and maybe I will at some point. But um, um, it works better that way, because if you, were, if you are um, an illustrator, you can probably put together a picture book, mostly writing from your pictures. But if you're a writer and you can't draw, you can't oh, illustrate yeah. your own book. So yeah, that's absolutely. how it works. As a matter of fact, I got started with Helen. Um, Helen um, it draws kind of funny, cartoony sort of things. But uh, she, had, um, she had submitted a whole bunch of funny manuscripts to the publisher I was working with at the time, Houghton Mifflin. And, um, and, and the editor there said, Helen, how would you feel about having a real artist do your, do your book <laughs> instead of you? <laughs> and, and she started laughing. And so that's how we met, because I, be, I was that real artist. And years later, she wrote a, 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 a picture book autobiography called Author, A True Story, which was just hilarious. And she illustrated it with her own kind of cartoony figures. And she contrasted on one page. She told the story about how we met. And, uh, and she contrasted on one page, well, here's how I draw a pig, and here's how my illustrator draw a pig, draws a pig. So I, we both had, she had her cartoon yeah. pig, and I had my yeah. pig next to it. And we, yeah. I, was the, I had a guest appearance in her, her book. So oh, that's, that was that's fun, incredible. yeah. That's incredible. Well, yeah. it's nice to be able to form that kind of relationship. Yes, yeah. But it's interesting, because when I, when I, just for our audience's sake, in order for the illustrator, or you as an illustrator, not for you to get work. You you have to you have to work with the publishers yes. in general. Mm -hmm. So how does how does one get to work with a publisher? I mean, if you're an illustrator, mm -hmm. you just put your. Do you have to go around to all the publishers and give you give them your portfolio, or do you do this online? Or that's how I did. I don't even know how it works now um, for new artists getting out there, and I'm grateful I'm not starting. <laughs> now, but that's how that's exactly that's, how I started. Yeah, you know, we yeah. used to have appointments in person. They would see portfolios on a certain day. Or, uh -huh. or just you know, a couple times a year or something, and I would bring my portfolio around to all the major publishers, and you know, and they would so it's no it different. take a look at it. And a lot of people liked my work in the beginning, but you know, rather than taking a risk on somebody who was brand new, and and I really didn't know how to put a book together at that day. I was lucky to meet um, um, my editor, and really the dean of children's books. He's retired now, and I miss him terribly. Walter Lorraine, who um, became a teacher and a mentor to me, and helped me get work as well. Mm -hmm. You know, and as well. As, as helped me kind of walk me through the process, and I learned a lot on the job there. Well, and I don't know if that that's people have that opportunity anymore, but that's how it that's how it worked for me. And so then, when you get a couple things out, then it kind of snowballs, and and uh, mm -hmm. you get you get offers from other you know you see they see a published book, and, and you might get an offer from a different publisher or right. You know, right. That's, well, that's, that's interesting because I think that that it, what it proves is two things. Number one. As we take our work around to different uh, different publishers and or agencies, if you're in the advertising and agency uh, arena, 
um, you really do need to be thick-skinned a lot of times because yeah. it's not, I, if I hear correctly, it's not necessarily the quality of your work. It could be good, but there's a lot of other people that are out there that are good, oh, yeah. that are ahead of you, that have been working in the industry. So it's, you just have to break in to the industry yes. and all the help in the world you can get right. is basically going to come from those people. You have to be good, but you have to be a little lucky too yeah. and you have to be very hard working, I think. So. No different than, all actually, it sounds to me like it's no different than being in the music industry right. or anything else. Mm. I mean, it's just yeah. a, it's a combination of making the right connections to be right. able to help, your path, help you, along, you along the path. Right. Right. Um, it, it, is, uh, it is very interesting to me. You, you have a lot of books, obviously, out in the market right now. Uh, how, long, how long have you been in the business? My first book came, well, I have to date myself then. I don't mean Thanks, to, Tony, I don't mean to, I, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I've, okay. I'll take uh, it back if you'd yeah, like. Yeah, okay. Uh, no, uh, it's, it's, it, my first book came out in 1978, yeah. right out of art school. That's good. Yes. Well, that's okay. It was See, quite forgettable, cool. too. You were it was, probably about, wasn't a very good book. You were probably about 12 or 13 Yes, I was a child you, prodigy a illustrator. child prodigy <laughs> illustrator. So, exactly. So, to help that whole thing along. And I've lost count about how many books I have I have published. Some are not, you know, some older ones are not in print anymore and whatnot. But it's well over 100. I'm sure. Well, so. you know what? It's exciting to see that that uh, uh, that process take place, and to be able to find a niche that you can make a living in. Oh, it's wonderful. And yes. Because, it, for, like me, there's nothing like loving your work. Oh my gosh! I, mean, so, just, I, I know. I, mean, I think you know, if you're an artist, if you're an artist who can make your living at what you love, I mean, it's the luckiest thing. Any, anywhere, you know. So. Well, I, you've got a couple of books with you. Yes, I do. And I would uh, be delighted to talk a little bit about those. And if you want to just uh, show them to the camera, we yeah, can sort okay. of go through the process. This is one called Zany Zoo. It was a bunch of uh, different limericks about different, uh, different funny animals. That was a lot of fun to do. Um, and then here's a Valentine's book called A String of Hearts. Um, Here's one by, uh, this is another author with, with whom I've worked quite a bit and hope to work again with Laura Numeroff. Um, she's quite a well-known and very talented author. Great. And this is what puppies do best. We had a book called What Mommies Do Best. We had a book called What Daddies Do Best. And then we finished it up with puppies and kittens. So, and it was Dynamite. a flip book uh, where you know you would go, we, we, the, what the puppies would do best would be on one side and you have the same story on the other side, what kittens do best. So I would have to think up two different ways to do oh, that. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, it was fun. Oh, that's it was fun to do. Yeah, it. yes, it was. Like, oh. you know. Well, you know, when, let's, let's talk a little bit now that you showed the books a mm. little bit about it. Um, the process by, in which you go through to mm -hmm. get to the end result. Yeah. I mean, you must start with probably, all right, you start with the author's story. Line. Right. You must then do a layout of some sort. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, I'll get, I'll get the manuscript, and, and usually it's very, it's, um, you know, only about five, probably five typewritten pages or mm -hmm. so. It's, it's brief, because it has to be, because the pictures are, this audience is four to eight or so, and the pictures are really telling the story and right. helping kids learn to read and get involved in books and all of that. Right. And, uh, so it's hard for, I think it's hard for authors um, in this genre because they have to learn not to describe, you know, they, and use a lot of adjectives and let the pictures tell the story. It's, it's interesting. That's very it's challenging, interesting. yeah. yeah I mean, mo yeah, most people think it has to be really simple because of the brevity of it to write a children's book, but it's really not. So it's, a, it's about getting a great idea, I think. And um, so anyway, I'll get the manuscript and, um, Usually the first thing I do, uh, and, and what I do best is probably anthropomorphic animal characters, uh, and that's fun for me. So um, I will start drawing, say it's a book about a bear mm -hmm. and, or pandas or something, and I will start drawing uh, you know, pandas. I mean, in the old days, we'd have a clipping file. Now you can use Google Image. Google right. Image is fabulous for that. Yeah. So you look up pictures of pandas, and I'll draw a lot of them kind of in, you know, like they really look or so. And then eventually I start putting them into, you know, um, outfits or making them into like more, you know, human type characters. And, and at that point, um, so I do a lot of little character sketches until I get I get it the way I want, and I'll practice doing different expressions with the with the face of the bear or and gestures, and um, if I'm drawing, uh, if lots of times I'll use a human. Um, um, model to uh or from from the google image to to give me a position you know like if i have you know if somebody's throwing a ball or something like that and i can't do it out of my head and i'll look at a you know say a baseball a photo of a baseball player throwing a ball and then next i'll have a panda in the baseball uniform and he's throwing the ball and that's how i that's how i get there that's that's great yeah. you know you talked talked a little bit about 
dating ourselves and so forth, but just to, just mentioning clip art, or, you know, you're having having a having a file of of, of illustrative work yeah. or hell of photographs to to reference years ago that we all used yeah. because I went through the same process. Yeah. Really, I mean, I mean, I can't remember the files of stuff that I actually threw out. Oh yeah, I mean, just incredible amount of stuff. And I know it's, yeah, so much, it's, it's, it's so much nicer because it's, it Google, is. you can Google anything. Oh, it's I there. know. If and I need if I need a position, somebody sweeping a floor, and I can't quite get it, I'm drawing it out of my head or something right. like that. There's a thousand images of it, and then I can do what I want with it. Or, right. And it's it's fun. I mean, I remember in early books, I, sometimes I'd have a friend like pose for me. And some kind of, uh, you know, the, like, like I need you sitting like this or something like that. And right. They come over so, and I was drawing a hippo right. sitting in the chair like that, and they'd get a little, <laughs> like, a little, a little <laughs> miffed, you know. And I'd explain the situation, you know. <laughs> not really you. Yeah, not really you. Not right. really you. I, right. had, I actually just right. recently did that with a little boy across the street because I had done a, a, a painting, a, a yeah. full portrait of my nephew or my my grandson down in in, uh, in texas and i and i couldn't find anything i liked so i just went across the street and said would you stand holding some yes. flower yeah and he said and, and he looked at it and he said that's not me right <laughs> so, right right, so, right exactly so it's just kind of a funny thing yeah but that takes us through the process that you're talking about that's takes how i us, started yes takes us that's, through uh, and uh, I, I i love that part the character development part i mean that part is i'll just sit there and, and make a million sketches and that they're and it's really fun and then the, the harder work comes the, the next Step for me is to is to do a little storyboard, and I make these little squares that I think um, we'll be able to see. Then, and I number them, and you have to leave so much. You know, our books are generally uh, most picture books are 32 pages. Mm -hmm. You leave some front matter for um, you know a, a dedication page and and whatnot, and uh, say start on page five, and then you have to figure an end on page 32. So then I have the text in front of me. So I, I'm writing. I'm, I'm crossing out lines there, like this many lines on this page or this events on this page, and I try to get the climax of the story to work with a you know a big picture like that'll go across both a double page spread that'll go across both pages. And at the same time, you have to think about a little bit about the design of the book, too, to make it more interesting. You know, you don't want a couple lines of text, a little picture underneath, and then flip it for the next page. You want to vary it more than that. That's so, extremely interesting. Yes, so you really are doing, you're yeah. doing the layout. But I'm surprised that the author doesn't control the amount of text on each page. Yeah, because you, well, because that determines what I illustrate so that's and how I'm going to tell the story. So there's usually natural breaks in the, in the text, too, right. that, that uh, you know, that that is easy to put together that way. That, uh, But um, if somebody else, what we call, breaks the story for me, mm -hmm. then it, it, it just interferes with my picture ideas. Uh, so you, you, yeah. yeah, so that's interesting. I have a harder so time. Like, like creative some, process yeah, sort of comes it, to an end and you go, what am I going to do now? Yeah, well, there's sometimes some helpful editors or art directors, you know, kind of break, you know, send me a sample dummy without pictures and they've broken the text for me. Mm -hmm. And I have to throw it out and just start all over again because I can't work that way. And I get, <laughs> you know, that's, that's, I mean, they don't mind, that, you know, it's, yeah, it's, no, it's just a process. Sure. And, and um, so then, um, then I'll do like thumbnails for ideas for, for the illustration for each page. And then, then I do it full size in pencil. And, and then I put the type next to the actual picture because, and then sometimes I change my mind once I see the two actually physically together on the same page. Right. And, and when I get what's called a, a whole pencil dummy done, um, then that goes back to the publisher and the art director and the editor and everybody looks at it and comes up with co editorial comments or, mm -hmm. or art suggestions mm -hmm. and hopefully not too many. And, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and you know, know, based on what comes back to me, I'll make corrections, right. send that back in and then it comes back to me with approval to do the finishes. And so then I, I use like a light box. I, a lot of people, you know, do computer illustrated books and do fabulous work with it, but um, I'm pretty much of a Luddite and I'm still doing it old school by hand. I hear you. So I, I take my pencil sketch and I do a, like a clean trace of it on um, usually a type of watercolor paper. And then, um, then I put the pen lines on it, erase okay. the pencil, yep. Yep. and then I paint in the colors. And then I might go back over it with pencil and, and, and ink some more. And then, and then you know, some but, months later, it's a lot of hard work. Then, you're, <laughs> yeah. then you send it in. I so. can appreciate that. Yeah. Well, that's very interesting. So typically then, is there a typical time frame for any one of these 32-page children's stories that you normally go through? Yeah. I mean, do you do them in three months? Do you do them in a month? Do you do them in a week? Well, I don't mean to push four, the week. Four, but five, but four or five months. Yeah, so four all the stuff that's yeah. going back and forth. Yes, so, right. So and and it's, a, you know, it's, it's pretty time-consuming to do 32 pages of art. And you have to sort of keep, and if it's a, 
you know, one reason why this, this anthology of, of uh, silly poems and limericks and everything was fun to do because it was different characters all the mm -hmm. way through. And sometimes it's a little more challenging when you're doing 32 pages of the same characters. Yes, you know? and I was going to say, you, taking each one of them, well, I, you know, I mean... And sometimes you're drawing a lot of penguins. I know, I was going to say, it's <laughs> got to be in all different positions and changing them. Yeah. So you don't, you don't basically lay, like, like the typical, you used to go the typical cartoon character, yeah. characters were developed where you lay one page over the other and just make sure that they're moving in the right direction. You just, they're all freehand, oh, yes. or they're all drawn free. Yes. Not so much freehand drawing, but yeah. they're all drawn independently. Right, right, it's not yeah. like animation. It's yeah. not like animation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I would say that, uh, that, that this has got to be an absolutely interesting process because these books uh, probably, uh, every six, you're doing every six months, mm -hmm. roughly, so you're doing mm -hmm. two, two to three a year, mm -hmm. probably in that, mm -hmm. in, that, in that time frame. Mm -hmm. um, which can be quite interesting because you're sitting down drawing. I mean, I, I don't know if it gets boring, but mm. doing the same character over and over and over again mm. can be quite uh, challenging, as, I, as you said. I would well, think. I can actually look at a book that I've done a long time ago, and I can almost pick out what was the last two or three illustrations because I'm tired at that point. <laughs> 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 and I, hopefully nobody else can tell the difference, but I, I mean, no. you, I've never had that experience that anybody could. But I, in my own hypercritical eye, I, no. can, see, I can see that a little no, bit. I, I think we're all very critical of yeah. our own work and we tend, yeah. to, we tend to be overcritical sometimes of it because look at it's it. not, look at it it's too not much. how and sometimes you just have to exactly. take a break and go back to it and put more into it when you have a little when right. you're a little fresher at right. it and everything but I, I, uh, I just find this whole process fascinating because it's yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's an arena for really developing and for all of you people that are out there for developing uh, a creative outlet that, that uh, can be uh, applied commercially to uh, so that you can go out and make some money at it. So it might be something that you may want to uh, look into and, and, and talk about and call a few publishers and see where they go. I mean, you never know about these things. I know today there's a lot online right mm -hmm. now. I mean, you, oh, yeah, you, have, yeah, a lot of you have a plethora of illustrative, uh, illustrators mm -hmm. that are out there that, uh, and there are companies that just handle illustrators that mm. will help you yeah, to, the, to go in the right a, direction. Yeah, but I'm not sure, and, yeah, agents and, and so um, forth, right? Um, but I, I always advise people when uh, they're asking me about how to break into the business or whatever, uh, whether it's an author or an illustrator, I say go to a really good children's bookshop or, and, and, and look at the books and look at the pictures and look at the style, you know, what styles you like or, right. you know, I mean, because uh, the wonderful thing about children's books is they're, they, you know, mine are, mine are humorous and, um, and that's what I do best. But there are really kind of fine art children's books. Yes, there I mean, are. Yeah. And there's all kinds of clever, wonderful things that people do. And, and a million different styles. And, and so if, if you want to get, you know, if this is something that interests, um, uh, interests a person, I would say go look at all of those and find out what appeals to you and what, might, what your work might be like. Or maybe your work is going to be completely different from everybody else's. And then you would know who, who that publisher is. And then they might be interested in that type of work. Although most publishers, you know, do a, uh, a whole variety of, of uh, artists sure, and uh, artist type uh, uh, types of books yeah. that they put mm -hmm. into. I, I would suspect then also the same thing would be apl applicable to people that are writing because if, yes. if you yeah. if you don't go out and if you don't go out and do uh, a little bit of research in terms of you know how you want to write or see other writers and how they write and the styles in which yes. they write and then. You either emulate them or move on to your another. But but there's all kinds of writers that are oh, out yeah. there as well. Yeah. So that has to influence uh, how somebody will write, and, and you know it, the, making the marriage of a, of a of an author and an illustrator mm -hmm. together in the children's uh, market seems to be a, a wonderful way to make a living. You know, it's interesting. Other than I mean, adult books don't have the same capability because mm. what are you what are you dealing with? You're dealing with if you're going to illustrate, you're going to you're going to do a cover. A cover. Maybe, right. maybe something else. Chapter headings or, cha or something, yeah, something or other. Like yeah. But very, very seldom. Mm -hmm. So, um, it, it, when you're dealing with uh, novels for adults, you mm -hmm. don't have the you don't have the same capability. Right. Well, or juvenile um, juvenile I guess the market books, for sure. which is the next you know the next level up from picture books. T there teenage, will be a little bit of art in that, like you know, books, uh, but sure, not yeah. but most it's mostly juvenile and teenage. I yes. Suppose, yeah. Right. Exactly. Right. right yeah. Exactly. Mm. So so you limit. So children's really children's books are really where you can shine. Yes. As yes. an illustrator, I mean, yeah. You've got all kinds of and some I've abilities. done some things like baby books where where I I didn't have one to bring, but a, a little board book that you see, you know, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. that uh, yeah. and, uh, you know, and sometimes, you know, some of my picture books have been adapted to, to board books. And then they also, it's wonderful because they mostly all go to paperback. Um, 
um, e-books, although those aren't so good. I, you know, I don't think those are a good substitute for actually holding a book when you're a small child. And, right, right. And um, although they do a lot of clever things with it, and um, and books on tape, and um, so the child can play it over. Speaking and, and, of books on tape, and I mm -hmm. want to just take that up because I did I did research, and I know there's a, maybe one or two. I'm not sure how many, but I know mm -hmm. I saw a couple on on YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, audiobooks that were yes. done and that, that have been illustrated oh, by you. Oh, quite a so, few, yes. Oh, quite a few, and, yeah. And uh, stuffed, some, once in a while, stuffed animal. Um, uh -huh. And we had a tacky the penguin stuffed animal. It's quite funny to see a toy company make prototypes of your your drawing. You oh, know? no kidding. Yeah, oh, and you, yeah right. What a, just trying what to get the expression kick. right. And said, anyway, they did a very good job. What an absolute and, um, yeah. yeah, and then and then foreign editions and then so um, and never thought about yeah, it. Yeah, I, I have oh, books published in. Um, I I um, I just had some come in Chinese. And um, Bulgarian and French and Italian and German and and um, Spanish uh -huh. and it's it's quite interesting to see the translations and all oh, of that. So goodness. yeah, my yeah. Well, do you ever get into a situation where you have to go to a seminar or something like that, and you get a lot of kids around to meet the author or anything like that? Um, I used to do. Yeah, they, I mean, most publishers um, well, send I mean, people out on book authors tours, and yeah, right. authors do it a lot. And I was I, I I did it, but it was it was difficult for me because I was always working so much. I didn't have a lot of time, right, and right. you you really have to prepare a presentation. I you know I I always enjoyed going out and getting the kids' reactions. That's fun and visiting yeah. schools. And right, whatnot, but right. but I haven't done it in quite a while. Oh, and that would I, be cool. Yeah, yeah it's even local. Or, sure, or local you know, I mean, I, 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 you know, I spoke at the you know the American Librarians Association, mm -hmm. um, the Children's Librarians right. Conference, and whatnot, and uh, so I've done things like that too. So well, Lynn, I, I tell you, we're going to wrap this up in a bit. Mm. Um, uh, our time is short. I'd like to sit here another for mm. another half an hour and talk to you, but unfortunately, we just don't have the time mm. right now. But um, just so that so that our audience is aware, you make your is it your summer home in Plymouth? Are, it is, it, yes. Uh -huh. Okay, and then and then you 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 move north. I in, do. In the, I spend no the winter time. Yeah, I spend the winters in uh, in Vermont. In, the, in Vermont. Yes. So you you gotta love the snow and you gotta love you know like yeah, skiing I, and whatever. Yeah, I'm a big skier. Goes on with that. I'm, I'm sure. a big skier, Most and people. and yeah, and and it works out nicely because when when. One sort of drawback to being an artist, I, well, maybe this isn't the way for everybody, but I sort of have to just be in my studio by myself working alone. And you can I get you. you can get kind of yeah or you I, can get kind of isolated. Sure, of course. So it works out beautifully for me if I go out in the morning and I ski a couple hours with my friends and then come home and and get you know then I'm like ready to work. Yeah, and so, you got that nice fresh invigorating air to help yeah. you along too. It's not like uh, not like going down south where you're just, you're and, yeah, in the right. doldrums of the, right. the heat and you don't want to go back in because you got to turn the air conditioner up and yeah. on or whatever right. just to get in the mood to do something. Right, like right. That. But I was working on a book and it was my my friend Helen Lester's book again. Um, it'll be out next year sometime and it was it involved a little badger named Boris who had problems going to sleep it and um, so one of my friends asked me when I was out skiing one morning he said you've been skiing a lot he goes what's happening with Boris the badger and I go well Boris the badger's got two problems one is he's too tired he can't go to sleep at night and, he, and the second problem is his illustrator comes home from skiing too tired to draw him <laughs> <laughs> so but that, that but I got it done that, I definitely got it that's done that's incredible that's really good <laughs> but it was funny so then I was thinking that it might be fun like Helen had written that that book about her life as a, as a picture in a picture book format, as an as a children's book author, and I thought maybe someday I would do a companion piece as an illustrator. Yeah. And I I had some ideas about my little characters coming out of their shelves, the bookshelves, and jumping down and and you know hanging over my shoulder while I'm drawing, saying I don't look like that. Draw me this way or something. And that's cool. Yeah, we'll, we'll I look, haven't gotten. Yeah, stay tuned, folks. I haven't we'll, gotten any farther than that. We'll look forward to you know, doing something. Like I hope that. so. Yeah. In the meantime, <laughs> thanks an awful lot for coming in and so thank and, you. And it's been fun. Thank today. you for it's having fun. me. Okay. And for all of you out there, um, you know, again, Tony Visco, you can, you can uh, email me anytime you want through my website at www.panthonyvisco.com. You can contact me here through the uh, local access television, PACTV. Um, or, uh, you know, just email me directly at uh, tonyv at uh, panthonyvisco.com and I'll, I'll be happy to talk to you anytime you want. Advise, let us know what you want to see or hear. Happy to do it. In the meantime, have fun painting. It's always a pleasure, and see you next time. Bye-bye.